actually stop getting a clean up of it again. Oh, the things he must have endured. Oh, poor thing. Hopefully he'll start to wake up soon. Oh well. At least we'll have to get some of these wounds looked at. Oh, hello, there you are. It's so wonderful to see you. Oh, oh. I am so sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. <laughs> I, um, that, that was rather foolish of me, actually. I should have kept my distance until you woke up. I, um, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm so sorry for everything that you have endured over the last however long that you've been here. But it's over now, okay? I'm here to take care of you. I'm not going to harm you at all. That may be a bit difficult to understand, seeing as you've been the captive of a vampire for so long. Now seeing one in front of you that's trying to help you, I can see how that would be difficult to believe. Well, my name is Celeste. I'm a doctor. An actual real doctor, not like whatever that other vampire told you that she was. She is technically a doctor, but she's a bit more of a crazy, mad doctor, <laughs> than a doctor who actually helps people. Well, I am actually a doctor with the Vampiric Council, and I need you to know that this, none of what has happened to you here was condoned by the Vampiric Council at all, right? We are supposed to have a treaty with your people, not, um, not tying you up and, and keeping you in a shed like this. I am so very, very truly sorry. Would it be alright with you if I take a look at you a little bit? I'm sure that you have been through quite an ordeal, and you wolves are incredibly, incredibly resilient and strong, <laughs> but being that awful creature's captive for so long, I'm sure that there, there may have been some, uh, you know, long-lasting effects from that. Would you mind if I examined you? That will work for now. It's all right. I'm not asking you to fully trust me. But I would really like to help you, if that's okay. Anyway, um, my name is Celeste. Did I say that already? I don't remember. What's your name? It's lovely to meet you. I'm glad that you are still alive. <laughs> we have actually been working with your pack for a very, very long time, trying to find you. So I'm glad that we were able to before um, things got worse, I suppose. <laughs> yes, your pack, they are, well, they've been very, very concerned about you, but they are all doing well. It's all right. Yes, we were able to intervene. We've been working with them and there is actually someone sending word to them right now, so your pack members should be here very, very soon, I would, I would expect. It's good to have people that care about you. Anyway, in the meantime, why don't we just take a look at you, okay? Make sure that you receive any sort of medical care that you need. Okay, let me put this down. I was just trying to clean you up a little bit. <laughs> before you woke up, but we'll start with the examination. Oh, yes, you are quite restrained, aren't you? Of course, we'll start with that. Um, these chains, they look like they are very strong. Are these silver? That's what I thought. All right, well, obviously that is probably very painful. Let's get those off first. I do need to make sure that I wear gloves for that. Silver is also not good for vampires, so get these off of you. Don't worry. Oh no, no, I don't need any sort of wire clippers or anything like that. Vampires are much stronger than we look. But I also don't want to touch the silver. Alright. Just hold nice and still. I'm just going to 
There we are. So I have to... There. Alright, that should be only the chain off. I'm curious as to why she had chain on you and also the rope. That seems a bit over the top. You would think that chain would be enough. Aconita. That's what she was doing. She was experimenting on you, wasn't she? Trying to see what the effects of aconite are on your people. <sighs> I am so sorry that you've been through that. Wolfsbane Spain is obviously an awful poison. I mean, it's not good for humans either, but of course it's even worse for someone like you. So these these ropes have been soaked in aconitum, you said. Interesting. I'll have to see. I mean, I'm sure we'll find it as we go through this cabin too. A, a liquid, you said? Like a, a poison? Hmm. Okay. Well, here. Let me just cut these off of you quickly, okay? Yes, rope is a little harder to just cut or to just pull apart. <laughs> it's woven to be very, very strong. There we are. I'll get that off of you, okay? Let me just untangle all of this. Uh, Get that as far away as possible. You're not going to try to attack me if I get you fully untied, are you? I honestly wouldn't blame you, but it does seem as though you are not exactly at your full strength, and um, I assure you that I am. <laughs> That's not a threat. I mean you absolutely no harm, but if you had thoughts of harming me, I'm not sure that that would go very well for you. Okay, I just, just wanted to make sure. <laughs> supposed to be here building a rapport with you, not uh, not threatening you, but please don't harm me, and I will not harm you, okay? Does that feel a bit better? Good, good. It does look like where those restraints were, that there is some superficial damage. Burning. Hmm. I'm so sorry that she did that to you. Do, do you want to talk about what else she did? Injections? Oh my. It must be all of these things over here that she's got out here. Aconite. Was it this? No, no, no. I'm, I'm not going to put it anywhere near you, I promise. But this was it. This was what she was trying to develop. All right. Good to know. Well, we will make sure that all of this is destroyed. I promise. We'll make sure that everything here in this cabin is destroyed. <laughs> well, I mean, we do have to, you know, analyze everything. It's all a bit um, red tape, you know what I mean? But we'll make sure that that never sees the light of day again. An antidote. Hmm. Another vial. Do you remember what colour it was? Oh. This one, maybe? So, so she also developed an antidote to the aconitum poison. Interesting. Yes, this we will, we will certainly examine. You want a bottle of this? You know, for everything that you've gone through, I think that's only fair. <laughs> we are, after all, supposed to have a treaty with your people. This kind of thing isn't supposed to happen anymore. Of course, I would be happy to give you a model of this to take with you, once you are strong enough. Now, you are welcome to leave at any time at all, alright? But if you would like to wait for your pack to get here, then they can make sure that they escort you home safely. You do look a bit worse for wear. Do you mind if I examine you a little bit? 
Just some very simple medical tests, just test your, your vitals and things like that to make sure that you are, are, not, um, are not suffering more than you have to. Thank you. I appreciate that. If anything I do at all makes you uncomfortable or brings back flashbacks or anything like that, please tell me, okay? I'm not here to harm you, I promise. I really am so, so very sorry for everything that's happened to you. Alright, I'm going to start out just placing this on your chest to listen to your heart, okay? Okay. You can breathe normally for this part, don't worry about holding your breath or anything like that. It sounds like your heart is still very strong. That's good. Anyone lesser, any sort of human or other creature, probably would not have been able to endure what do you have. I'm not hearing any sort of anomalies or anything. Would you mind if I take a listen to your lungs too? Alright, I'm going to come around the back here. Alright, I'm just going to place this on your back, okay? Just like that. Could you take a deep breath in for me? And out. Another deep breath in. And out. Good. One more time. Breathe in. And out. Good. Now just breathe normally for me, please. Good. Good. All right. I'm not hearing anything to cause any alarm for that, so that's very good. I'm glad that there doesn't seem to be any damage to your heart or lungs. Is breathing laboured for you at all? Does it hurt? Okay. Sure, yes, I'll make sure to take a look at your throat. Or is she making you drink it? Inhale it, yes, okay. Yeah, that could definitely have some effects on your, your nose and your throat. Of course. Would you like me to do that first, or would you like me to try to clean and dress some of these wounds for you? Sounds good, of course. I've got a cleanser here. This should work to get rid of any of that residual aconitum or the burning from the silver. And then your species is very, very fast healer, so hopefully just removing any of the toxins and, and bandaging it up so it stays clean will hopefully be enough to get you feeling a bit more like yourself. Yeah. Just a simple... simple cotton pad here. very simple. If you'd like, I can put it on my own skin so that you know it's not going to hurt you. <laughs> okay. Well, let me know if this causes any sort of discomfort, but it really shouldn't. It should just help to cleanse away anything. Is that alright? Good, good. I'm glad it feels good. It should have a nice cooling effect, especially after that burning from the silver. Anything else? No. You know, after we heard a tell of what was going on here, there were those who have been on the Vampiric Council for a very long time, and they said they actually recognised the signs of what was going on from a vampire who tried this exact same thing. 20 years ago or so. 
And she was actually, unfortunately at the time, she was funded by the Pantera Council. It was at the time, 20 years ago, where there was quite a lot of tension between wolves and vampires, especially in the United States. And war was um, an imminent threat. And so the council did actually fund her research for a while. However, she was not exactly clear on her methods. She ended up bending the rules quite a lot. And eventually she, um, well, she ended up losing the wolf that was in her captivity. And she barely made it allowed with her life. Yes, it seemed that that wolf wanted some revenge. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't blame you for wanting the same, really. That's understandable. Well, I assure you that she will be very, very severely punished. There are quite a lot of things that you can do to a vampire that is not good for them. We have our own aconitum. <laughs> our own versions of it, anyway. We certainly do. Right, I'm just going to get around your neck here, if that's alright. I will be very gentle, as I said. Any sort of tension or discomfort, please let me know. Is that okay? Good. Good. Now, from my understanding of werewolf physiology, you do heal very quickly, but being weakened physically, especially, I'm sure she hasn't exactly been feeding you well, it might still slow down the healing process a little bit, so we will make sure that you get an excellent meal after we're done here. Hopefully that will help speed up the healing process a bit more. Right, I'm just going to get down here. Is that okay? Okay. As I said, anything that causes any sort of discomfort or just makes you feel unsure, please let me know. There. Alright. Did I miss any? Anywhere where those chains or that rope was touching your skin? Okay, good. Well, we can definitely come back to that. But if you wouldn't mind, I would love to take a look at throat, your nose, your eyes, your ears, things like that, just to see what we're dealing with. Okay. Close that back up for now, but we can always use more later. Alright. Let's start with just taking a look at your throat, okay? Seeing as that was something you said was burning a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to take this tongue depressor. If you would just open your mouth, please. Thank you. Again, anything that gives you pause, please. Please let me know. I'm not here to cause you any sort of fear or pain. <laughs> Definitely is some scar tissue back there. It looks like whatever you've been inhaling or ingesting. It's definitely taking its toll. Nothing that won't heal over time, but I understand why there is discomfort. If I got you a glass of water, would you trust me enough to drink it? And it's okay if the answer is no. Okay. I wouldn't blame you if you didn't want to. It's a bit scary looking of a glass. It's the only one I could find in this cabin that she had, but this just has nice, clean water in it, okay? It will help the burning, and of course it's just very nice to drink a nice, fresh glass of water after such an awful ordeal. You just hold on to that. You keep sipping it, okay? And I will certainly get you more if you need more later. 
All right. If you wouldn't mind, I would like to take a bit of a closer look at your eyes, okay? Now, with a poison like aconitum, I'm sure that that had some strange effects on your vision, on your just mental state as well, didn't it? Okay, do you remember the last time that she gave you any? Was it a, a, a few hours ago, a day ago? Okay, so it should be out of your system, I would think. If you wouldn't mind, just look right at my nose, please. I just want to take a look. Okay. Hmm. Keep looking at my nose, please. I just want to get a look. Okay. Good. Looks like your dilation is happening at a speed. And it should. It's always good. Alright, same thing. Just sort of look right at my hand here, okay? Just look right there. I'm just going to test how your pupils react together. Good. Okay. Good. Okay. Good. It looks like your pupils are reacting together. It's called your consensual. If there's a dissonance between it, your eyes should dilate at the same level, even if they're not, if they don't have the exact light, you know, shining into both of them. What affects one should affect the other, but if there's something wrong, then they won't. Right now, would you mind, please, just try to follow this light with your eyes. I just want to see how the eyes are tracking. Notice you're doing a bit as I walk around. You have a very watchful eye. Again, perfectly understandable. Good. Good. Right. I think that's going okay. Well done. All right. I don't think that that is causing any sort of concern. I'm glad that. It's been a little while since she's given you that awful medicine. Right, now, if you wouldn't mind, could I take this and actually just take a look in each of your ears? I'm not sure that there's going to be anything, you know, bad, but just in case I would like to take a look. Okay. Alright, now, if you wouldn't mind, could I just take a look in each of your ears very quickly? I mean, it's not like she was putting this into your ears, right? <laughs> That's good. But just, just to be sure. Okay. I'm just going to come over here then. Just... Is that causing any sort of discomfort when I do that? Okay, good. Just... Okay, I'm not seeing any sort of damage or anything in there. That's very good. Alright, excellent. Come around on this side if that's alright. Same thing, I'm just going to press right here. Is that okay? Okay, yeah, again, not seeing anything I should cause alarm. Press right here. seeing anything to cause any sort of alarm in either of your ears. So, that's very good. How's that water? Good, good. Now, how is your strength right now? Could you actually, could you grab my hands for me, please, and just give it a squeeze? Okay. Yes, I'm sure that's not your full strength. <laughs> but it does feel nice and firm. That's a good sign. 
<sighs> what a mess this all is. Again, I just, I can't stress enough how sorry I am that all of this has happened to you. It's definitely a different world than it was when vampires first started really rising to power. Now we have the vampiric council that tries to keep, you know, vampires in line. Okay, I'm just going to squeeze around your arms so here. Does any of this cause any, any pain? Anyway, they try to keep everyone in line. People are definitely much more suspicious and much more, I believe the phrase is on to us than they used to be in the old days. But there are some vampires who adapt to that and there are some vampires who just get a bit angry about it, take things into their own hands. Now I'm just going to spray this with a little bit of another cleansing solution, okay? And try to get you a little bit cleaned up. Here we go. Alright. Is it alright if I just try to wipe off your face? Clean away any of this grime? It would be nice if there was a way to help both of us to just make things a bit easier. You know, vampires, we do need to feed on human blood, unfortunately. It's just sort of the nature of things. Some vampires love it, if I'm being perfectly honest, but there are those of us who try to do so in the most humane way possible. Unfortunately, the older vampires, they rather enjoyed the hunt, I suppose you could say. Nowadays, it's much more difficult. But you know, there are some humans who are actually okay with it. You know, it's perfectly possible to drink from someone without turning them and without killing them. I wonder if there was a way to make sort of a consensual arrangement. I don't know. I'm not sure that most vampires would go for it, honestly. Me? Well, seeing as I am a doctor, I am actually a real doctor. <laughs> These retract when I need them to. It's a bit painful, but they can. I, um, have connections to get me access to things like blood bags. Of course, when there's something of a war going on or any sort of conflict like that, I also feel bad about taking the blood that way, but I have, over the years, met a few humans now and then that were okay with me drinking just a little bit from them. I always make sure that I treat them very, See, what if there was a place, though, that could connect vampires to willing humans? With, of course, you know, proper care and compensation and all of the safeguards in place. You're right, it would be quite an ordeal. But I think that it would do a lot to relieve the tension. Not just between, you know, vampires and your species, because we would just be a bit more taken care of, but also just other vampires too. It's a lot of infighting. Vampires are not like wolves, where, where you have packs and you have families that you are loyal to take care of you. Oftentimes with vampires, it's every vampire for themselves. Even with so much power compared to the average human. It can still be a bit scary. I'm sure that seems like a silly thing to you. You've just been horribly treated by a vampire. Sorry. It's not your problem. It's got to be some sort of a solution, but that is not your concern. 
All you need to worry about is resting, getting better, and hopefully being able to put this whole ordeal behind you. Now, when your pack gets here, I am going to give them my personal telephone. That way, if anything does go wrong and you need a doctor who knows that you're a werewolf instead of just a human doctor, if I can be of assistance in any way at all, I am there for you, okay? I mean, I'm sure that you have your own doctors too, but just in case. And if you would like to stay in touch, again, if there's anything at all that you need, you feel free to contact me. I just, again, want to apologise for everything that you've been through. I promise that that person you met is not a representation of all vampires. She is a very old and bitter vampire. And luckily, not all of us are like that. In fact, very few of us really are. But of course it does still happen. So. We will be in contact to just make sure that you're doing all right, okay? And I wish you all the best in the world. Why don't you try to get some rest? I'll wake you up when your pack is here, all right? All right. I know that you've been in the darkness for so long, but it's over. You can go back into the light now. Put this whole thing behind you. And I'll be here to help you in 